Well, it's good to have you with us at the hour. I'm Daniel Che. We begin with the announcement of a reshuffle of the chief aides at the top office. This is the latest in the chain of events following a shocking revelation that President Bakkenes' close aide and unauthorized personnel with questionable ties may have had strong influence on state affairs. Song ji struts us off with Chung Wade's swift reaction to rising calls for those involved in the scandals to take responsibility. In a massive shakeup on Sunday, President Mark fired half of her secretaries. After having ordered all of her senior secretaries to submit resignation letters on Friday and spending the weekend listening to voices from the political and civic sides, it was Buck's first act to take responsibility for the series of scandals for letting her confidant Choi Soon should have access to the nation's top secrets. Recognizing the severity of the situation and to promptly respond to calls for a reshuffle, President Park has carried out a reshuffle of her secretaries. All senior presidential secretaries as well as the chief of staff have submitted resignation letters. But considering the circumstances of state affairs, the president has accepted those from the chief of staff and the senior secretaries for policy coordination, political affairs, civil affairs and public affairs. Those with links to scandal are all stepping down, including Civil Affairs Top Secretary Wu byung -woo, Senior Policy Coordination Secretary An jong bum as well as one of Park's closest advisors, Cheng Ho-sung, who is suspected of handing classified documents to Choi soon -shil. Only two appointees have been named for the posts of Civil Affairs and Public Affairs, with the top office saying a follow-up announcement will be made at an early date. All eyes are on next move, whether the president will continue with a cabinet reshuffle or other measures to respond to political and public demands. Culture Vice Minister Kim Jong, who is widely considered a key liaison of Che, also submitted his resignation letter on Sunday. Song ji Arirang News. Also, the three main political parties each held emergency meetings while they saw eye to eye on the need to immediately arrest Che Sun Shil. Opposition parties criticized the dismissal of the presidential officials came too late. Park Ji-won keeps us up to speed on lawmakers' responses to the swiftly snowballing situation. During its emergency meeting, the ruling Senuri Party Supreme Council members decided to urge the presidential office to form a new coalition cabinet soon. The coalition cabinet would include non senuri politicians, and it shows the ruling Conservative Party also senses that the current cabinet members, some of whom are allegedly to be closely involved with Che, can no longer lead the nation. We believe that the cabinet reshuffle should be understood and accepted by the public. The ruling party also welcomed the presidential office's decision to fire some of its embattled secretaries and officials, saying the party had repeatedly requested the top office to carry out the dismissal. However, the main opposition Democratic Party of Korea criticized the dismissal as too late, saying the party had urged the top office to fire the problematic aides since two years ago. The main opposition Democratic Party of Korea also strongly urged the prosecution to immediately arrest Choi soon shil adding that she should not be given time to manipulate other suspects or destroy possible evidence. The party also accused the presidential office and prosecutors of failing to understand the level of public outrage, saying they will still allow Che special treatment. We're wondering whether some group of people are trying to hinder the revelation of the whole truth to protect the administration. Regarding the ruling party's suggestion of a coalition government, the Liberal Party's chairwoman Chumiye said the suggestion doesn't mean anything at this point, and what really matters now is that the presidential office immediately arrests Choi Soon Shil, and only after that will come the possibility of other talks. The minor opposition People's Party also strongly criticized the prosecution's move to not summon her immediately, calling for her swift arrest and a fair and square investigation into the presidential office, Che and other involved officials. The party also said the dismissal came too late, questioning the timing of Che's return and whether it was orchestrated to allow her and the presidential secretaries to find a way to conceal the truth. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. 
A major piece of the puzzle that paints a disturbing picture of the Park Geun-hye administration, Choi Soon-sil, returned to Korea on Sunday. Her arrival is expected to speed up investigations on the numerous allegations she's facing, and she may be summoned as early as Monday. Our Kwon Soo-wa reports. Choi Soon-sil is back in the country. The woman at the center of a massive political scandal arrived at Incheon International Airport Sunday morning after hiding in Europe for almost two months. She did not come directly from Germany, where she has been reportedly staying, but flew from Britain's Heathrow Airport to avoid attention from the press. Tres' return should speed up investigations into her suspected meddling with state affairs. Prosecutors say they haven't decided yet when exactly to summon Choi, but pundits believe it could happen as early as Monday. The 60-year-old did not appear in public and her current whereabouts are not clear. Instead, her attorney held a press conference stating that Choi is willing to cooperate with the investigations once prosecutors call her in, but that she needs some rest. Choi asked the prosecutors if they could give her a day to recover her health. Choi will fully cooperate with the prosecutors. She conveyed her deepest apologies for causing disappointment and frustration to the public. Choi's daughter, Jung Yura, did not return with her. She's alleged to have received favors regarding her admission to Ihua Women's University. According to reports, Choi was accompanied by someone related to the prosecution, which the prosecution office denies. There is speculation that through her past connections, she could be getting rid of evidence and creating alibis to buy time. In the meantime, Sunday, the prosecution continued its probe, summoning Choi's close aide Gu Yong-tae for the second time, as well as key figures of the K-Sports Foundation. Choi Soon-sil is suspected of raising funds for that organization, along with the Mir Foundation. The presidential office of Chong Ade showed more cooperation with the investigation Sunday, submitting a relatively large number of documents possibly related to Choi's case. Earlier, Chong Ade has rejected the prosecutor's attempt to raid the nation's top office. Kwon so Arirang News. Sidestepping from that issue now, North Korea's unregulated market economy is responsible for over 28.5 percent of overall demand in the regime, including consumption and investment. That's the conclusion reached by the Bank of Korea after closely dissecting the relationship between North Korea's social accounting matrix, which studies the flow of all economic transactions between households, firms and the government, and the regime's informal sector, or the self-employed economy that is not monitored by the central government. Researchers found that decentralized economic production and consumption have been on a constant rise in both the agricultural and the financial sectors, with the communist state's richest social class now using private financial institutions to invest in various construction projects. 28 percent is significantly higher than the range of 10 to 25 percent seen in the 15 republics of the Soviet Union from 1965 until its demise. Half of Korea's South Korea's top conglomerates have posted negative growth in the first three quarters of the year in terms of sales. According to corporate tracker Chebel.com on Sunday, 15 out of 30 companies, excluding financial firms, showed a decrease in sales from January to September compared to the same period last year. Q3 operating profits were also down on year at 13 companies. Growth was especially poor in the country's main export sectors, such as electronics, cars and steel. However, the shipbuilding industry showed better results than last year due to strict restructuring measures. Central Italy was shaken by another earthquake on Sunday following double tremors that brought down buildings on Wednesday. The latest reported by the U.S. Geological Survey was a magnitude 6.6 quake that struck areas some 68 kilometers southeast of Perugia. There had been no confirmation of casualties or the extent of damage from the latest seismic event, but authorities there report at least nine people have been injured by collapsing buildings with no deaths so far. Wednesday evening's 5.5 magnitude and 6.1 tremors that struck Viso were followed by some 700 aftershocks, and a quake hit that same region in August as well, taking 298 lives. 
We are inching ever closer to the day Americans elect a new leader. Polls by major news outlets have Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton ahead of her Republican rival Donald Trump by a margin of 2 to 6 percent. Still, the FBI is reopening a case regarding Clinton's email scandal, and this could potentially revive Trump's campaign somewhat. Kim Jong-su helps us paint a clearer picture of how things could shape up in the coming days. According to a poll jointly conducted by ABC News and The Washington Post and released Saturday local time, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is favored by 47 percent of the public and business tycoon Donald Trump by 45 percent. The gap, however, is within the margin of error of plus or minus three and a half percent. The poll covers October 24th through the 27th. Surveys conducted last weekend gave Clinton a assuring lead over Trump of up to 12 percent. But over the past six days, support for Trump has risen by 7 percent, while Clinton's has fallen by 3. Experts say Trump's allegations that the U.S. presidential system is rigged, combined with his efforts to get his supporters to show up at the polls, have helped rally Republican voters behind him. At the same time, they point to a sort of overconfidence among Democrats, some of whom believe Clinton will win with or without their votes. It is also worth noting that the latest polls do not reflect the public's reaction to the announcement on October 28th that the FBI will reopen its investigation into Clinton's email scandal, which has long been considered as the Democratic nominee's biggest vulnerability. Polls in the upcoming week could see Trump take the lead. The period since the FBI's announcement is not yet covered by other surveys either. In the polling average compiled by Real Clear Politics, Clinton still leads by 5 percent. Meanwhile, according to the Washington Post, at least one voting irregularity has already surfaced. With early voting underway in several states, a registered Republican in Iowa named Terry Rote was arrested on Saturday local time for allegedly voting twice. She explained that she had done so in the spur of the moment because she was worried that, quote, the polls are rigged. Kim Jong-su, Arirang News. These are the stories we're following at this hour. Thank you for watching.